Okay, this is just going to be a uh, midweek video, not one of our main ones. But what I'm doing this week, I'm going to try out one of Harry's fire to fork recipes that he did a couple of weeks back, where he did some crispy roast Chinese roast pork. So uh, there it is, sitting in the fridge, drying out, getting that top piece nice and dry, the bottom uh, on the plastic plate, keep it a bit moist. So, uh, not uh, going to get the chef to do this. It's Dorothy, of course, is the chef. She's not a qualified chef, but she should be. She's an amazing cook. But I'm going to do this one. And uh, if I can do it, and it works out, then I guess anyone can do it. <laughs> so, what we're going to do... Oh, sounds like the car's back. So, Dorothy's just back from her work a little barbie at the back there can't quite see it but uh we're going to do the uh, cooking out there later so very shortly i'll be getting stuck into uh, putting this dish together so here we are getting the stuff ready we have all the ingredients here some chopped up ginger and uh, all the bits and pieces which i'm now we're just going to scroll past on the screen if you haven't seen Harry's video, this will uh, give you an indication of what you need. This is our belly pork that has been in the fridge. Top fairly dry. And uh, we are going to boil that first. Now I'm going to make a slight change to the recipe that Harry did. And I'm going to boil it first, and then I'm going to put some of the ingredients on. Because I think what's going to happen... Uh, Maybe with the other version is that a lot of the stuff that he put on the meat to marinate it got washed off when it got boiled. So I'm going to make a slight change and if I screw it up, well that's my fault. But first off we're getting the water heated, get it boiling, then we're going to pop the pork in there for 10 minutes. Now I'm shooting this on the phone, I don't have any proper camera gear, so it's going to be a little bit strange the way I do things. <laughs> first off we're putting the ginger in this is going to be the dipping sauce okay the soy sauce And he's, whoa, whoa, okay. Well, that was a total screw up. <laughs> that was way more than we wanted. I did not realize that was, uh, that's gonna be cut out. <laughs> okay, we got the rice wine vinegar. And that is the basis for our dipping sauce. So there's our dipping sauce. So we have the water nicely boiling away here. So we're just going to drop the pork into there. Decent sized pot. Make sure that is as submerged as possible. Now the original recipe uh, had something else besides the peppercorns, but I decided not to put those in. I just put a few peppercorns in. At this stage, I think it's going to make a lot of difference. Now we're supposed to put that on for 10 minutes. Okay, now I don't have a tripod or anything fancy, so uh, all you're going to see for this is me bringing the pork here, but I'm just about to get it out of the pot. Let it drain a little bit into the pot first. Okay, I'm just going to pop it down and dry it off. 
smelling rather porky, as I guess it should. Now we're doing this ass about face from the way Harry did it. We boiled him up first, but now we're going to cut it and put the five spice and the other ingredients on after we've boiled it. So uh, if this doesn't work out, I can't blame Harry because I'm not doing it the way he did. Just in my mind, this is um, perhaps a better way of keeping the flavours in rather than letting them disappear into the water. So we'll see. These bits at the end are a little bit wobbly. I'll just mop that up. Let's keep it as dry as possible. Okay, so we've got a little bit of sugar that we're putting on here. And we have the five spice. I've been warned to hold on to the top of this. And as Harry says, you can overdo the five spice, so I'm just going to do one little coating and that's it. You then have the white pepper. That's not the white pepper. <laughs> and uh, we have the white pepper. We have what would normally be MSG, and in this case it's called Vitsin, which is effectively the same thing. And we're just going to work that into the meat. These bits are a little bit loose up here, so it remains to be seen how well they do when we start to fry it. This end is good and solid. This is where we get to the uh, putting holes in. As you can see this one was actually pre-scored which it would have been better if it wasn't. And of course sometimes they do that in the supermarkets. It would have been much nicer if it was solid and we were only just putting the holes into it now. The more holes we can get in, the better. You give it a good whack with this thing so that those stick into it. And certainly we have tried doing this without cooking the pork first. And it's damn hard work trying to get these to stick into the fat when it hasn't been pre-softened. So this pre-softening technique might be a step that uh, creates a much better result in the end. Okay, hopefully that's enough. Okay, now the next step was to put a little bit of the vinegar on the skin. Just give that another brief wipe down before we do that. Careful with this. I'm going to put it into the spoon first. Oh, that's a bit too much. I'll drink some of that. There. I'll rub that into the skin.
and the final part was to put some baking soda just a little bit on top there it's still pretty wet that skin but we'll see what effect that has and uh, the next bit you see is going to be out where the barbecue is okay this is the setup for doing the cooking it's really basic it's an old cooking camp stove to which we've added a barbecue plate it's going to put a bit of oil on there and uh, give it a good clean down and once it's heated up we'll be ready to go okay let's get a little bit warm so we're going to have to turn that down a bit and these stoves are notoriously bad for temperature control we've got a fair bit of wind here too so you can see by the way that's smoking it's a little bit too hot So the difficulty with this is because most of the heat is here, that central burner is here, I'm trying to keep it off the heat to the side a little bit, otherwise we're going to have a little bit of a problem with it burning. And as you can see under there it's a bit charcoal already and that's a bit early to have that kind of colour. So I've got it jammed as far to the right hand side as I can get it and I'll have to flip it around a couple of times probably just to stop that from overcooking on the bottom we don't want it to burn unfortunately having a bit of trouble controlling the heat on this and we are getting the underside of that a little bit blacker than I would like should be nice and brown where we've got some black in there that's uh, cooking it a bit too high the sad thing about these sort of cookers is that the heat control is pretty awful on them. I keep turning it down, but uh, eventually the wind's just going to take it out if I take it too far down. Now you can hear from that we've got problems with the wind trying to take the flame out. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit blacker than it should be. But uh, we're just going to have to keep it pushed over to the right hand side there and do the best we can. This is taking quite a bit longer than expected. We're over 20 minutes now, well over 20 minutes. And although we're getting the start of some crackling going on, you can see the uh, piece has fallen into two parts. We are getting the start of it happening, but uh, it's not there yet. Just trying to get those bits that are not starting to crackle in the hottest part. It's coming, but it's not quite there yet. And we are getting a little bit of black hair on there, but uh, trying my best not to let that overcook. The biggest difficulty with this has been that temperature control, because unfortunately on these things, as you can see, you've got the areas where the burners are, where the maximum heat is, and you've got to keep moving things around all the time. So heat control has been a little bit difficult. But we do have a little bit overcooked there, but we have got there in the end, I think. It seems hard. And the same with this one. Well, maybe, maybe not. Just making the right sort of scraping sound, so... Uh, Take it in, chop it up, and uh, see what the result is like. Now, unfortunately, a little bit blacker than I would have liked, but I think we got there with the crispiness. This was just part of the temperature control problems I had with that barbecue. If we'd had a more even heat, then that would have come out more evenly. So. Uh, Let's chop this up and uh, see how it ended up. Okay.
Now this will be the big taste test because uh, Dorothy is the genius cook. <laughs> Let's see what she thinks of it. If she likes it, then it's really good. If she goes meh, then uh, not quite so good. <laughs> okay. Uh, give it a go. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Okay. Well, there we are. We have the seal of approval from the boss cook. So uh, we'll deem this one a success. We'll catch you later, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's not going to be great uh, vision or sound because it was all shot on the phone. But uh, we'll be back to normal on Saturday with uh, another everyday exploration or uh, history video. Catch you later, guys.